Welcome back to our Dutch farmhouse. My name is Naomi, and as part of our kids' bedroom makeover, I have built this vertical Hot Wheel garage. Let me show you how I did it. So this is what my notes look like. A pretty simple wooden box with a grid inside, and I already had something in mind for a decorative piece on top as well. Now to make sure that each slot is exactly the same size, I wanna make a grid out of thin strips of wood. I have seen people do this with a table saw, which I don't have, so I'm gonna try it on my miter saw instead. The slots will be nine by three and a half centimeters big, so for the horizontal pieces, I am marking every nine centimeters, and then I account for six millimeter thickness of the wooden strips that I'm using. And I just kept on going and going until I realized that I was going way too far. I only needed eight slots horizontally. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that would be enough. And then for the vertical ones, I marked every three and a half centimeters and then again, six millimeters for the thickness. Then I started cutting the pieces to size. Now I bought more pieces of wood than I needed because there is nothing worse than running out of materials halfway a project, but I do always try to be as efficient as possible. So I cut two of the longer ones and one smaller piece out of one strip of wood. Turns out I only needed seven out of the 10 so I could return three of them, getting some money back, which is always good. I noticed that these strips were smoother on one side than they were on the other, so I made sure that they all faced the same way, having the pretty side facing up. And then I roughly sanded all the edges to get rid of any splinters that I had caused with my miter saw. So I created the grid using what's called half lap joints or cross lap joints. Now to make sure that all the spaces that I need to cut are in exactly the same place, I taped all of the pieces together and would cut them all at once. But to be able to do this, I needed my saw to move back and forth at a certain depth and my current miter saw can't do that. So I got out my old miter saw and I didn't think I'd ever use it again. So I didn't realize that it was sitting in a place right underneath where there was apparently a bird's nest. That's really bad. I'm gonna have to clean this up first. So it was very, very, very filthy. It literally got pooped on. Um, so I needed to clean it up a bit, but this saw I can actually set to limit how far it goes down and then I can still slide it back and forth like so. So I just really hope that it still worked. I tested this method out on a scrap piece of wood first because I know me and I will destroy 60 euros of wood in three seconds if I don't. I put a piece of wood behind it just to serve as a spacer so that I can move the saw back and forth along the entire stack of slats. If I don't do this, the cut will have the curve of the saw blade and then the slats in the back will have cuts that aren't as deep as the ones in the front, if that makes sense. <laughs> So that is satisfying. To make the spaces big enough for another piece to fit inside, I cut once and then I moved the wood over ever so slightly and then cut again. And I just kept on doing this until I could no longer see the lines that I made earlier. Then I took some scrap pieces to see if all the spaces were big enough to fit another one inside and fix the ones that weren't quite right. Before taking the tape off, I sanded all those jagged edges so that they would all be neat and pretty when I put it together, which by the way, was kind of fun. It was like a puzzle and it fit very snugly, so it was very satisfying. One thing that's really important though, is make sure you keep all the slats in the same orientation as when they were taped together. If one of them is turned around, then the cuts might be in a slightly different place than the others, and then things might look wonky or just not fit at all. I'll take better care of you from now on. 
idea. You helped me a lot today. Thank you. Mm, you're so heavy, though. Then I went on to make a frame for it using something that's similar to a 1x2. I think they are 44 millimeters by 28. And then I cut mitered corners for them and fit them around the grid that I made. For the back side, I used a scrap piece of plywood and I planned on painting the grid and the frame black and then stain the back piece so it stands out a little bit. This is a piece of birch plywood that I had laying around and it had one of those lovely stickers on them that you can't just take off. Oh, these are the worst. <sighs> off. Now in my head this thing was a lot bigger than it eventually turned out to be but I counted his Hot Wheels he has about 87 of them and this grid has 104 slots so he has some room to expand his collection but if I had made it any bigger it would have just looked very empty so I decided not to. I first glued the frame together and clamped it to dry. I also filled up some gaps using wood filler just to finish it off a little bit more. And when it was all dry, I took out the grid so that I could spray paint the pieces separately. So I found a really big piece of cardboard to spray paint on and start it with the grid. Now I am still debating if maybe it would have been better to paint the pieces before putting them together but I think it might have damaged the paint anyway while sliding the pieces into each other. But this was also quite the hassle as I had to get into all the nooks and corners with my bottle of spray paint. So I'm not sure which method would have been better. I covered everything in a gray primer first and then I did two layers of the black paint with a satin finish. I did the same thing with the frame, but only on the inside of the frame for now because I've got some other tricks planned for the outside. To prepare the backboard of our Hot Wheel garage, I took it inside and taped off the edges of the plywood. Now I did this because I want to glue the frame onto it later and it's always better to glue bare wood than stained or painted wood to each other. So this way I could keep the edges completely bare and stain only the visible part of the plywood. I did test two different stains on the back side of it and chose the lighter one this time. Because the rest of it will be black, I don't want to go too dark or you won't even notice that the inside is a beautiful wood color. Although now that I think about it, you might not see much of it anyway when it's filled with little cars. Oh well, I will know. <laughs> So from the beginning, when I was planning this project, I didn't want it to just be a box. I wanted to add some kind of decorative piece to it. And I remembered that I had an old mirror from when I took apart that side table that I used in the hallway. When we moved in, that side table was actually already here and the mirror was attached to it. And I took it off, but look what it has on top. <laughs> this thing. So I figured I could take this off. It is actually just attached with a couple of screws. And then I will spray paint this as well and put it on top of that box just to add a little bit of extra something. I don't know what it's supposed to be, but I think it looks really cool. So let's see. It took quite a while for everything to dry, but when it finally was, I took the tape off of the frame and glued the whole thing onto the backboard. I also put some glue onto the grid pieces, although I'm not really counting on that to do much. It's quite snug inside its frame anyway, so it's not gonna fall out. And then on top of the glue, I am also adding some staples to it from the back, making sure that it will all stay nice and secure. Now, as I said, I had something planned for the sides because you can now see the texture of the plywood versus the frame. I am covering it all up with wood filler. I also used this method to fix some spots that didn't line up perfectly. And then after that I dried, there was a, a lot of waiting for things to dry in this project. I sanded the sides completely smooth. And then I could finally add the top piece onto it. 
again with glue, but also with a set of screws. And then all that was left was painting the sides. And then I finally got to move everything inside. Now you couldn't see it from the angles that I had filmed from, but it had been raining like mad the entire time I was working on this project in the garage. So I was very glad to be back inside. I got out some black paint and did some touch-ups on some places that have been damaged and things that I had just moved around a little bit. And then I attached a set of sawtooth hooks to the back of it to hang it from. I will link to these in the description because they are really, really handy to have around. Now, of course, I needed to put all the cars in, sort it by color. <laughs> So I actually sat down on the floor and I sorted all of his cars by color and then put them in in kind of a rainbow pattern. I'm sure it won't stay this way for long, but it's fun to show it this way. <laughs> And then here it is. I love how it turned out. I love how it's a decorative way of tidying up something that would have otherwise be clutter. And of course you could modify this design to fit other kinds of toys or different size cars. Anyway, if you enjoyed watching this project come along, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And thank you so much for watching. I will be back very, very soon with the rest of this bedroom makeover.